One of the kinds of uh, work that I do, uh, as mentioned, was uh, is uh, get involved in uh, Etsy ZSM, and previously I've been involved in uh, Etsy NFV and some open source stuff. And uh, the other type of uh, standards that I do is uh, 3GPP uh, uh, 5G standard. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, I'm going to talk about 5G core network standards uh, with a view towards uh, automation. So uh, hopefully I'll impress upon you a little bit that there is some innovation going on in standards also. There's some uh, excitement there. Um, I think when we were developing standards for LTE and 4G, I mean, uh, NFV and SDN was, was not a notion at all. But uh, hopefully you'll see that uh, with 5G things are different. So uh, this is kind of the way I'll go. Um, uh, I'll try to stay at the 3GPP kind of service level, so I won't go into the virtualization level and the infrastructure level. There are a lot of other uh, uh, talks doing that. So uh, we'll talk about the uh, architecture and then some of the um, uh, operations, how to automate operations, the workflow there, and look at closed loop automation. Okay. So let's dive in. Okay, I was nervous for a second. Okay, so. Here's the, the 5G core network architecture. There are lots of different features in 5G. But f uh, if we think about automation, what I'll bring to your attention is this uh, service-based architecture, SBA. So if you look at the left side, it's kind of the traditional 3GPP uh, diagram, right? You have functional entities, and they interact with each other through standard-defined uh, standard interfaces. But the only interaction is through those interfaces, right? So we standardize the behavior. Now in 5G, if you look at the right side, we have a service-based architecture. So now what we have is network functions instead of network entities. And what they do is they expose a set of services to other network functions, to really any network function. So it's depicted as a bus. So, th so there's a big difference there. Uh, and then uh, if we look further, uh, each network function is can be broken down into a set of network function services. So if you look at the red blow up there, I have a, uh, an example of a session management function. It has, a, in this example, two different services, PD or packet data session management and event exposure. And each of those services further uh, broken down into a set of operations. So what we have now is going from you know, network entities to network functions, so then network function services, so it's uh, finer granularity. Each of those services can be uh, independently scaled and even uh, independently implemented. So if you have, uh, you can implement a particular service in a special way if, if you wanna, wanna optimize it. Then we have the, uh, the architecture uh, requires uh, network function service registration and discovery. So in fact, one of the network functions, this NRF uh, shown in purple, it's a repository function. So all the network functions register there. So network function services can find each other by going through this repository function. So um, kind of, you know, to summarize, we have lots of moving parts, lots of dynamic behavior baked into the standard. So it really calls uh, for automation in 5G. Okay, so uh, next we'll look at kind of how do we automate the operation side. So, uh, you know, we need to be service agile, right, in the 5G world. Um, so I think this workflow is, is, should be familiar to people. Service creation or service design, service deployment, and then close up automation. So this is what I'll, I'll kind of talk about. Um, certainly as we go in the, the, the initial stage of service design, it's, uh, you know, it's where you're, you're, you're putting things together and you're putting it into the service catalog. One of the challenges is to have machine-readable artifacts, right, that are open and work across all different vendors, uh, VNFs, uh, so that we can automate the whole deployment. And that's one of, you know, certainly one of, the, one of the pain points now. So if we go into this workflow, um, what I'll do is basically, uh, combine the first two steps together to kind of save time and make it a little more a little more easier. So what do I mean by service design? Here we'll have a, a network planner or an operations person where she basically comes up with a set of inputs, service inputs, to automate putting that package together, putting into the service catalog. It pulls in the various elements that are shown in the picture. And then uh, Automation, then further, you, you ops person would select what to deploy and goes into deployment. So we're kind of 
squeezing these two steps into one. And uh, what I'll talk about is kind of the inputs and the outputs, staying at kind of the 5G standards uh, service, service level. So let's take a look at the, the inputs and outputs. So here are some of the, uh, the inputs. Now, of course, a service uh, design or creation environment is very operator specific. But my example today is just working on 3GPP standard. So it'll all be just uh, standards based. OK, so there's many different things to consider. If we think of the service type, this could be uh, the service type that I think you're all familiar with, the, the broad categories of 5G services, enhanced mobile broadband, massive IoT, or ultra-reliable low-latency services, right? So those, those are pretty different, and you would require a different uh, uh, set of uh, BNFs and stuff for, uh, to meet those. Now, if you have network slicing, you don't need to have network slicing, but if you do, then you also have this, the slices to define. And they could be defined in those broad categories, or you could have further definitions on um, consumer slice or slices that are dedicated to a particular enterprise uh, customer. So the operator has to, has to figure that out in the initial uh, uh, planning and design stage here. Uh, there is one standards parameter I'll mention, this SNSSAI. Basically, it's a number where the first part is a standardized slice type, and the second part is kind of an operator-specific differentiator that the operator can use. But the standardized slice type, we will uh, standardize a few types of, of slices, and this is useful for roaming. So when you're roaming somewhere, you kind of ha have an idea what kinds of slices are available. So that's in the process of being standardized. But you would have to set those. You'd have to decide how you're going to allocate your slices uh, for that. Then there are a whole list of uh, service properties, I call them. You know, the mo mobility level, how mobile are the endpoints. Um, if you have uh, IoT sensors that never move, well, maybe you, you need some, uh, you would use a different type of VNF that's maybe optimized for that. Uh, of course, what protocols that you support. Um, there's this uh, notion, LADN, of a local area data network. So these are data networks that are available only in particular areas of your system. And so you have to define what those areas are, and these are values that you would need to, uh, to, to set aside. Um, do you need isolation? Some services need complete isolation. Uh, and then various other things like, you know, how much do you want to put at the edge versus how much do you want to centralize? What, where do you need connectivity? Is it just to the internet or somewhere else? And then any customer-facing kind of uh, network parameters, you know, like, like address pools and, and whatnot. So those are kind of the, the types of inputs. So now I'll talk about how the deployment goes. So uh, after you go through all the various steps, you create the artifacts, you put it in the catalog, and then now you want to deploy it. Uh, what happens? So I think we're all familiar, right? The first step is orchestration, where you have a bunch of VNFs that you need to orchestrate. So in terms of 5G uh, uh, standards, you'd have to figure out what network functions or network function services you want to instantiate, right? And system has to determine whether you can use stuff that's running already or you need to, to set up a new type or, or change, change an existing type. So some of those inputs I talked about before, uh, mobility level, that would determine what a AMF you use, access and mobility function. So if you had lots of mobility, you'd maybe have a different kind of scaling for that. So you would select your AMF instance type based on that. Uh, what protocols you, you support for the customer, uh, you would select your session management functions for that. And of course, your user plane functions have to support that. So you would select from those. Um, I mentioned isolation. So you could have an enterprise customer that says, you know, I don't want my traffic mixing at all with anybody else's. So that might require you to instantiate a complete set of network function or function services separate from everything else. So that would include like the policy function and uh, uh, subscriber data function as well for, for isolation. And then I was talking about services at the edge or centralized. So as you select your user plane functions, right? Remember these are, you, you have to decide which type of VNF and where to instantiate it. If you were doing a local or edge-based services, you, you would take that into consideration. Maybe you need a lot of uh, uh, session continuity, so you want to ha have a central anchor. That would affect your decision. And where they connect. So if they, if they have to connect to a particular uh, corporate network for an enterprise, then you would have to pick a particular uh, place for, for that kind of user plane function. So now you have all your, um, 
network functions uh, instantiated and, and up. And then, uh, then you have a lot of service level configuration to do, right? So I mentioned that repository function before. So the automation system, one, one of the things it could do is basically bulk register all the new network function and network function services into the registrar so that it's all ready to go. Um, if you're doing slicing, there is this NSSF network slice selection function. There you would provision your, your SNSSAI values, which I talked about before. So when users connect, they go into the right kind of slice type. Um, and then, so those are for the network functions. Now, there's a lot of subscription information that's related to these new 5G services at all, so you need to set that up at the same time. So I mentioned, uh, uh, for example, LADN. If you have these local area data networks, you would provision what areas those are available, which users are subscribed to those. You'd have to make put those in the UDR. That's the, uh, the subscription information repository. It's kind of the new version of the HSS. Um, so you have to align all that stuff. And then similarly, you might have a specific service or slice-based policies that you have to, to load into your, into your policy function. And then there's, I'll talk about this, there's a network exposure, which is another concept. Uh, there might be policies related with that, so you'd have to put that into the, either the policy function or into the, uh, the database where, where, where all the data is. So kind of all, all this stuff goes together before your, your services for 5G can start running. Then of course there's other stuff, like I said, at the virtualization level, infrastructure level, that's kind of common. I think, I think we're used to like network kind of configurations, um, whether you want to use SDN to control uh, some of that networking. There's also non-3GPP elements, you know, firewalls, DNS, et cetera, that, that have to be set up as well for all this. But I really won't go into that since it's not 3GPP specific. Um, so at this point, you have finally all your new services uh, up and running. All right. So then we go into, into closed loop uh, automation. So I think everybody's familiar with closed loop automation, right? Um, some people call it scaling and healing. Um, but um, there are various different triggers for that, right? So in this talk, I'll just focus on the last two because they're 3GPP uh, specific, but of course you have failure and uh, load and capacity management to automate as well. So I guess this, uh, this uh, room or this slot is kind of about machine learning, so I do have something for that. Uh, so in the standards, we actually do have this uh, new entity called Network Data Analytics Function, NWDAF. Uh, now this is still in the early stages of standardization, so it's, it's a work in progress. A lot of stuff is, uh, is still, being, uh, still being divine. But the NWAF is a central point to do analytics in the 5G core network, okay? So we're still looking at use cases and, um, you know, the, basically any, uh, any data that's available in the core network, and here you'll see this includes uh, applications as well, uh, is potentially available to the NWDAF, right? And then it will crunch the analytics and then it'll provide some kind of uh, analysis output that really can be, can be used by, uh, by anything in the core network, including applications. Um, so the algorithms that you use for machine learning and stuff will not be standardized, of course, but what we hope to standardize is kind of the types of raw information that the NWDF can look at, and perhaps the way it can deliver the analyzed output. Those will be things that are standardized, but they have not been standardized yet. There are proposals coming in right now. Um, if you, if you don't know, the, the first version of 5G will soon be complete uh, standards uh, mid this year, release 15. And so in that, we have identified uh, two uh, consumers, the, that network slice selection function I mentioned and the policy function. Uh, but really, any, anything else is also uh, open to, to be a consumer. So as, uh, as this phase two is happening right now, release 16, Various proposals are coming in, so we have we have things like you could potentially monitor the the state, the status, or the load of a network slice or a particular service. If you don't have slices, uh, you could look at uh, 
behavior of the mobile devices, like how mobile are they, where are they moving, if you want to make adjustments. And you can even look at application or third-party application performance and make adjustments. So it's really, uh, it should be pretty uh, interesting place for innovation once the, the framework is standardized. Okay. And then finally, we have this, this notion of information exposure. So here we have NEF, Network Exposure Function. Um, it's really like a gateway or I'll, I'll, maybe a firewall is a better example because it shares exposed information but in a secure way. So we have internal and external sh sharing. So any information from the network function services can be exposed to third-party applications but in a controlled way. Uh, so in that direction. And then in the other direction, third-party applications can influence the core network. So for example, it can influence the routing of particular uh, data for a particular service. Um, so it's, a, it's two directional. This exposed data may also be stored in the UDR for uh, analytics later on or you know, for whatever use. Um, that's external exposure. Internal exposure is where you use the NEF where network functions can expose data to other network functions in a similar way. But the NEF will do translations, so uh, it will you know, mask any kind of network topology that's private or any kind of uh, privacy issues or whatnot, so it's all done in a secure way. So this is another mechanism where as a network is running, you can have dynamic uh, changes occurring. So these are all in just the, the standards framework. So there's quite a lot of, uh, I think, changes from 4G in the basic standardized architecture to really have a kind of dynamic uh, behavior and really a need for automation. So without automation, it really, you, know, you, can't, you can't do this stuff by hand. So that's a brief glimpse into, into the 5G standards and automation. Thank you. Just uh, ask you about this bus and all this. As you said, all functions can talk to each other, right? By services, right? But previously, we had like GTP as a protocol, so we kind of we know in, in advance. So due to scaling requirements, that we potentially can really move those functions and distribute them. How you see the realization of the bus being standardized? Well, actually, so the it's in the process of being standardized now. So. Um, I believe I'm in the architecture level, but I believe the stage three folks have determined to use HTTP and JSON for at least the control plane messages. So for control plane, we'd not be used. We'd not use GTP anymore. And actually, in the user plane, GTP will not be used. But I don't think it's determined what uh, tunneling protocol you can use. But yeah, the idea is that as long as the network service is authorized, any network service can then. Uh, uh, use the services of anything else, and those are all standardized, what the services are, the parameters, and all that. So it should be pretty open within the, within the control plane, and even from control plane to, to user plane. Okay. Thank you.